Hello, and welcome to Mr. Barton's autograph video number 19. This week we're going to have a look at our second circle theorem, the um, cyclic quadrilateral, and I'm going to show you a little twist that you might want to challenge your students with. Right, let's set up our page. Let's see if we can do this in record time. I'm going to hover down to the bottom. I'm going to right click. I'm going to get rid of the key. I am going to hover up to the top. I'm going to click on 0.1 grid snap settings to give me a bit more accuracy. I am going to ho also hover around here and I'm going to click on no axes. Brilliant. I am going to hover to the left of the screen. I'm going to click in point mode. I'm going to pop, pop a point somewhere in the center of the screen there. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do circle. I'm going to pick a circle of a radius of three. Click OK. Nice. Right. Let's very quickly set up our cyclic quadrilateral um, theorem. So I'm going to need four points around the circumference of the circle. I'm in point mode. I'm going to attach them to the circle. So it's going to go a nice black arrow there. So I'm going to go one, two, three and four. Now I can't be bothered labeling these points today but of course you can if you're more than welcome to. As we looked at last week just click on each point in turn, text box, change the label, blah 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 blah. Right let's join up our points with some line segments so I'm going to, I'm not in whiteboard mode so shift's going to have to come into play here. Hold down shift, click on that first point, click on that second point. They are both selected, right click and voila down at the bottom line segment. I am going to just click randomly off the page there just to deselect everything and then repeat it. Hold down shift, click on that point, click on that point, right click, line segment, click away, click on that point, holding down shift, click on that point, right click, line segment, and click on that point, click on that point, right click, line segment, decent pace. Right, I am going to just move my points around a little bit just to muddle things up and I'll probably challenge the students at this stage would any of them like to predict what the relationship might be between some of these angles. To make life a little bit easy for them to, to predict, I'm going to just um, highlight a, a couple of them. So I'm going to try and measure this angle here, so I need to select these points in order. So I'm going to click on that point, holding down shift, click on that point and click on that point. Those three are selected, right click scroll down to the bottom and I've got an angle there I'm going to do it to no decimal places I'm going to get a nice big angle arc size I'll show the label for this one click OK 111 degrees and I might get them to guess what they think this other angle is going to be whilst I just set it up and measure it click 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 right click there's my angle uh, again I'll go no, no decimal places again I'll go 12 but this time I'm not going to show them the label I'm going to get them to try and guess what that's going to be um, maybe have a little prize lined up for anyone who gets it. I don't think it's going to be equal to 111 degrees because that looks quite an acute angle to me. Let's double click and have a look. Show label. Look at that, 69 degrees. Hopefully they'll spot the link there, but just to reinforce it, of course, we can measure the other angles. Uh, da, 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 angle, I'm going to try and go at record pace here to get through this because I want to tell you about this little twist. Uh, show the label, click OK. 85, I wonder what this one's going to be. If my math serves me right, I'm hoping something around about 95 degrees will be lovely. Click OK. Brilliant, 95. And of course, we can move things around and just show the students that the relationship is always true, no matter where we move it. Now, how about a twist for the last minute or so? I'm going to challenge the students to create a couple of quadrilaterals on here. Now, a rectangle will be the first one, and after a bit of messing around, they can come up to the board that they should be able to get their hands on a rectangle. Now, under the pressure of the time, I bet I can't flip and do this, but let's have a look. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, and then I might challenge them to do a trapezium and a couple of other ones, and then I'll finish by saying I'll offer £10 to anybody who can come up and construct me a parallelogram on here. And they'll be messing around for quite a while trying to get these sides parallel, and they might claim they've got it with a rectangle, but I'm looking for a more general form of parallelogram. And they'll keep messing around for a bit and probably struggle. And then, of course, the question is why? Why is it impossible to construct a parallelogram inside a circle? And all they need for that is a very, very basic knowledge of parallelograms and their brand new cyclic quadrilateral theorem. And it links together two nice areas of maths. So there's cyclic quadrilaterals. More circle theorems next week. Hope everybody's well. Take care. Bye-bye.